It finally happened. NASA has just opened a time capsule from the dawn of the solar system. This capsule contains the largest and most pristine asteroid samples ever collected by a spacecraft. The samples came from a distant and mysterious world called Bennu, which could hold clues about the origin and evolution of our planet and life. But the capsule also had a surprise. Some of the asteroid dust and debris had escaped from the container and settled on the spacecraft's electronics. How did this happen? What does this mean for the sample quality and quantity? And what will NASA scientists do with the asteroid material? These are some of the questions that we will answer in this video as we explore the amazing story of OSIRIS-REx and its asteroid adventure. Let's get started. OSIRIS-REx's journey to Bennu was not easy. It took four years and two billion kilometers to reach the asteroid in 2018. Once there, the spacecraft had to map Bennu's shape, surface features, gravity, and composition using its cameras, spectrometers, laser altimeter, and radio science instrument. It also had to dodge Bennu's frequent ejection of rocks and dust, which posed a hazard to the spacecraft. The main goal was to collect at least 60 grams of asteroid material using a device called TAGSAM, which stands for Touch and Go Sample Acquisition Mechanism. It was a robotic arm with a round head that could release a burst of nitrogen gas to stir up the surface material and capture it in a filter. OSIRIS-REx had only one chance to perform this maneuver, which required precise timing and navigation. On October 20th, 2020, the spacecraft successfully touched down on Bennu at a site called Nightingale, which was located in a crater near the north pole of the asteroid. The site was only 16 meters in diameter, surrounded by boulders as big as buildings. It spent only six seconds on the surface, but it was enough to collect more than 300 grams of material, exceeding the minimum requirement. Then, it stored the sample in a capsule and sealed it for return. However, there was a problem. Some of the material was leaking out of the capsule because the flap was jammed by larger rocks. To prevent further loss, NASA decided to skip the planned measurement of the sample mass and stow the capsule as soon as possible. On May 10th, 2021, OSIRIS-REx began its journey back to Earth, carrying the precious cargo of asteroid samples. It took another two years and 2.3 billion kilometers to reach Earth's vicinity. On September 24th, 2023, it released the capsule containing the samples and sent it on a trajectory towards Earth. The capsule entered Earth's atmosphere at a speed of 12 kilometers per second and deployed a parachute to slow down its descent. Then, it landed safely in the Utah Test and Training Range in the desert at 10.10 p.m. local time. The NASA team recovered the capsule and transported it to a clean room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. There, NASA scientists opened the capsule for the first time on October 2, 2023. They were eager to see what was inside. When NASA scientists opened the capsule, they were amazed by what they saw. The sample canister was full of black dust and debris that likely belonged to Bennu. The dust covered not only the inside of the canister, but also the outside of it, on the avionics deck where the electronics were located. The dust had escaped from the canister through small gaps between the lid and the body. How did this happen? NASA scientists think that when OSIRIS-REx touched down on Bennu, it created a shock wave that propagated through the asteroid's surface and ejected some material into space. Some of this material followed OSIRIS-REx as it backed away from Bennu and settled on its exterior surfaces. Some of it also entered the sample canister through the open flap and mixed with the material collected by the touch-and-go sample acquisition mechanism. So, what does this mean for the sample quality and quantity? NASA scientists say that the dust and debris on the avionics deck are a bonus, as they provide additional material for analysis. They estimate that the total mass of the sample, including the dust and debris, is about 400 grams, which is more than enough for their scientific objectives. They also say that the sample is in good condition, as it has not been exposed to high temperatures or contamination during the return journey. The dust and debris on the avionics deck are also a challenge, as they require careful handling and cleaning. 
NASA scientists have to use special tools and techniques to remove the dust and debris from the deck without damaging the electronics or losing any material. They also have to document and catalog every piece of dust and debris as they are part of the sample inventory. The team has already started to transfer some of the dust and debris from the avionics deck to a container for storage and analysis. This is a historic achievement for NASA and humanity. It is the first time that NASA has collected a sample from an asteroid and brought it back to Earth. It is also the largest asteroid sample ever collected, surpassing the previous record of 5.4 grams set by Japan's Hayabusa mission in 2010. Why is it important to study an asteroid sample? What can we learn from it? Well, asteroids are remnants of the early solar system, which formed about 4.5 billion years ago. They contain clues about the origin and evolution of our planet and life. By analyzing the asteroid sample, we can answer some of the fundamental questions about our cosmic history and destiny. Some of the scientific questions that will be addressed by studying the asteroid sample are, what is the composition of Bennu? What elements, minerals, organic molecules, and water are present in its material? How old is Bennu? How did it form and change over time? What processes shaped its surface features and dynamics? How does Bennu interact with other bodies in the solar system? How does it respond to solar radiation, gravity, and impacts? How likely is Bennu to collide with Earth in the future? How can we prevent or mitigate such a collision? To answer these questions, NASA scientists will use various instruments and methods to analyze the asteroid sample at different scales, from atomic to macroscopic. They will measure its chemical, physical, isotopic, mineralogical, organic, and spectral properties. They will compare its data with those obtained by OSIRIS-REx's instruments during its orbit around Bennu. They will also share some of the sample with other researchers around the world for further study. The analysis of the asteroid sample will take years to complete, but it will provide us with new insights and discoveries that will advance our knowledge of asteroids and the solar system. It will also help us prepare for future exploration missions to other asteroids and planetary bodies. OSIRIS-REx's mission is not over yet. The spacecraft still has enough fuel and resources to continue its exploration of the solar system. Its next destination is another asteroid called Apophis, which is known as the God of Chaos because of its potential threat to Earth. It will fly by Apophis in 2029 and observe its shape, size, rotation, orbit, and composition. It will also test some technologies for asteroid deflection and mitigation. This mission is an example of how human ingenuity and curiosity can overcome challenges and achieve great things. It is an example of how we can explore and learn from our cosmic environment. It is also an example of how we can protect our planet from potential dangers and learn how we can fulfill our dreams of reaching out to the stars. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And don't forget to leave your comments below. Until next time.